Today I'm going to discuss my top 10 tips for growing long, healthy, beautiful hair. Um, I'm just going to give you a sneak peek of each of these tips, all 10, and then I'm going to be posting videos later, breaking these down into their own little series. So don't worry, I'll go really into depth about each of these tips in videos to come. I just want to give you the um, top 10 reasons that I have today. So number one on my list is vitamins. I have taken all different types of brands of vitamins, um, regimen, vitamin regimens, so don't worry, I'll be going into product reviews and speaking about each of the vitamins that I've taken, but I do believe it's extremely important to take vitamins. Your hair needs nu your hair needs nutrients, your body needs nutrients, so it's important that you're nourishing your hair from the inside out. So every day, I take a minimum of at least two vitamins, so that is very important. These I got from Whole Foods, and I'll be going into depth later, but some type of hair or multivitamin. The next thing that I swear by are deep conditioners. Every time I wash my hair, I do a pre-poo, I do some type of hot oil treatment, and I always do a deep conditioner. I never just shampoo or condition my hair. I'm always making sure that I put in moisture. I'm always making sure that I use some type of deep conditioning treatment. And these can go from high to low end, from really do-it-yourself at home and expensive treatments to more expensive ones. I'll be going into depth about that, but you need to deep condition. The next thing is using natural hair oils. This is my best friend. We go way back. Um, organic virgin coconut oil. I'll be talking more about each of the oils, but it is so important. I wish I started YouTube a long time ago so I could have showed you guys all the things that I threw away. Basically a whole trash bag full of products that I threw away because the products are deceptive. They say they're coconut oil, but they're not. You read the ingredient list and the last ingredient is coconut oil. Or you go on Target and something says carrot oil and it has basically petroleum in it or it has mineral oil. It's not what it says that it is. So you have to be committed to thinking critically about products, reading the label, reading what's in them. And you can find things really inexpensive, but a lot of unfortunately black hair care is not what it says it is. And we're putting things on our hair that don't really moisturize or take care of them. They're basically the same as putting Vaseline on your hair. They're crap. So I believe in natural hair oils. Keep the hair moisturized. The fourth thing is taking care of your hair at night. I always wrap my hair. I'm a very rough, wild sleeper, so I normally have to put two silk scarves on, and I'll show you guys how I do that. So I normally um, wrap my hair up at night. I put on a silk scarf one way and a silk scarf the other way. I get these really inexpensive at vintage thrift stores, two, three bucks. And I also have a satin pillowcase. I believe in having a satin. Cotton is the devil. <laughs> you do not want your hair on cotton. It, the friction of it really um, promotes breakage. It really is drying to your hair when you think about using cotton washcloths or, or um, towels to dry off. It absorbs moisture. And so when you sleep with a satin pillowcase, when you sleep with silk, it allows your hair to keep the moisture and also to stay smooth and not break off. So I always wrap my hair at night. In fact, as soon as I get home from work or I'm done for the day, my hair is wrapped in the house. So wrapping hair. The next thing is trying to use minimum heat. Um, in this video and for the next few videos, my hair is straight right now. I really only straighten my hair every three weeks or so. Uh, and I don't put heat on my hair in between wash, in between my washes. So I really try to keep my heat to a minimum. I do wear my hair natural and curly sometimes. I will be showing you guys that, the regimen and the products that I use. But really, you cannot put heat on your hair every day. You cannot put heat on your edges every day. Uh, you just can't use heat that frequently. So trying to keep your heat to a minimum. The next thing, and I know this will be controversial, and these are things, I'm not an expert, I'm not a licensed cosmetologist, these are things that work for me. So there are a lot of YouTubers out there that have relaxers, there's a lot of YouTubers out there that um, have texturizers that are able to grow long hair. And my personal journey, and for me, relaxers were something I didn't need and something that unfortunately led to me having hair loss. I've had every color hair under the sun, red, brown, bleach blonde, highlights, I mean the Keisha Cole blonde, blonde hair. And almost all my friends, people that I talk to say when they get color, it causes their hair to break off. It's very difficult to maintain and to keep while having long, healthy hair. So I made the commitment to, I've my last relaxer was five, six years ago. I don't have any relaxer in my hair anymore. 
and I don't have any artificial color. A lot of people like for their hair to look as dark black as possible and so they resort to using over-the-counter black hair dyes. I don't do that anymore either. So I use um, Lush's brand of henna. Um, it has a henna and indigo mixture which doesn't create the red tint, it creates black. And I'll be making a video on that as well but I use natural basically henna and indigo to naturally dye my hair. So I don't use any relaxers, don't use any unnatural hair dyes. The next step is protective styles and this is also a very controversial topic. Um, for two years I wore my hair in sew-ins. I wore um, hair extensions and that's how I basically got a good starter length that I was comfortable with for me to start wearing my hair out. So for me that was my kind of go-to protective style but whether yours are buns, whether yours are braids, whether it's twist outs, twists, whatever it is, have some type of protective style in which your hair is able to relax and rest and not be constantly manipulated or constantly exposed to heat. The next one is going to be sectioning. And this may sound weird or random, but I am a firm believer. I do my hair all myself now, basically. One of the reasons for that was going to hairstylists, and as my hair started to grow out, having stylists try to rip a blow dryer through my hair or take a fine tooth comb and start combing, and my hair would be a matted, just crazy mess. And so now I'm very gentle and I take time with my hair. I section it off. I, the, I swear by these clips. You can get these at the beauty supply wherever really cheap and make a lot of sections blow dry each section out. Uh, moisturize and seal each section. Straighten each section. Don't get overwhelmed by your hair. Don't have tangles or a lot of hair coming out because you're not taking the time to section off your hair and make sure that you're paying attention to each area and also the scalp of that area. So that may seem random. I don't hear a lot of women on YouTube talking about that, but it's something that's very important to me, especially at this length. The next step has to do with trimming. I do all my trimming myself now. I use the search and destroy and dusting method. I'll be talking about that as well. But making sure you have something in your regimen that has to do with dealing with those split ends. Because the hair will continue to split up the shaft if you do not take care of the split ends at the bottom. But at the same time, you have to understand that your hair only can grow from the root. That's where it's growing from. So making sure you're taking care of that and making sure you're taking care of this hair on the end that's been with you for sometimes years and has possibly gone through a lot and needs to be um, trimmed. And the last step is has to do with water inside and outside. Making sure you drink a lot of water daily, making sure you're, you're clean and healthy on the inside. But also, um, living in D.C., the water here is really hard and really harsh. So you want to make sure if you're living in a city or you're living in an urban environment where the water isn't high quality or you often don't drink the tap water, a lot of times it can break down your hair as well. So you can go to Home Depot and get a um, shower head that will kind of purify and filter the water just like a Brita water pitcher does for your drinking water. And that's going to take out a lot of the harsh minerals and chemicals and make sure you're using high quality purified water on your hair like they would at a hair salon. It's very important if you do your hair at home that you have that type of water filter so that you're getting salon quality water that's going over your hair to nourish it because water is the number one thing that moisturizes and nourishes your hair. So those are my top 10 tips and stay tuned please for the future series on breaking down each of these further. Take care.